a, in a highly complex world, I think change is the only constant, and we have to be mindful of that. When I think of that, I think of three important things to keep in mind. One is innovation, the other one is practice, and the other one is purpose. Innovation, why innovation? Um, we, we are seeing so many uh, different technologies emerge, and it's a moment in life that kind of resembles the Renaissance, almost with all the technology that's being um, uh, developed. You talk about artificial intelligence, predictive analytics, augmented reality. All of those things are so easy now and accessible to people. And um, I also like the way Peter Diamandis des uh, describes this moment, saying that it's the moment of exponential, so exponential technology, exponential organizations. I also like the way he reminds us of the uh, chain reaction that happens when he describes the six D's of exponential. So when we're talking about the, the process of digitalization, um, deception, disruption, um, demonetization, dematerialization, and finally democratization. So I think he, he, he pictures it in, 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 a, in a sense that we're living this, we're going through this. And um, another concept that I think is very important in this moment of exponential is something that the Santa Fe Institute has been the exponent of, which is complexity science. I think Steve, Stephen Hawkins was the one who said that the 21st century was the, the century of complexity science. And I think in this moment in time, we have to make sure we, we adopt this approach of complexity, um, not only for the hard sciences, but also in order to try to overcome the social challenges, the societal challenges that we face nowadays. So one, one aspect of complexity science that I think is very important is uh, when they classify people, companies, cities, as complex adaptive systems, that are certain properties that I think are very, very helpful for us in, in our daily lives and in our companies. So when we understand that the, the whole is greater and different than the sum of the parts, that we, we have interactions happening uh, in, in us and in the world, in the companies, all the time. And with these interactions, we change. And um, because of that, we can adapt to change and we can evolve. So with that in mind, I think um, we can leverage more the impact of networks. Actually, we should, and we should really be conscious of that, the power of the networks, the power of the nodes, the connections and use that to our benefits, right? Um, another important thing is understanding that this happens. When you um, are planning strategies for your lives or for your companies or for the planet, you have to understand that you don't have to have the final strategy from the beginning. You can have the process of emergent strategy and, and change and adapt and improve as you go. So I think having that approach in, in your life and in your companies is very, very helpful. I think another exponent of uh, complexity science that I like very much is Jeffrey West. When he explains in his book, Scale, why cities tend to live longer than companies, he explains this concept that you know, cities sometimes, they are more um, um, free in terms of being uh, formed from bottoms up. Whereas uh, companies, as they live longer, they try to get more rigid. They kind of tend to be more top-down uh, kind of decision-making, which limits the ability to grow and the ability to thrive. So um, when you are talking about this new world, this new context that you, you're living in, um, companies trying to reimagine themselves and look you know, to the future and see how they can evolve in a nice way. I think it's very important for you to remember the networks and this approach, letting the networks and empower the networks for them to grow and not necessarily make them rigid and, and make the company rigid, controlling everything top down. I think a good example also is a company called Zappos and, and the way that they are allowing decentralization and, and, and self-organization to, to emerge is a very, very good example that we should all take a look at. So innovation, number one. Number two is practice. So what do I mean by practice? So focus on execution. 
Uh, we have so many decisions to make in our days, and it's so hard to get lost in, in this overwhelming uh, world of decision making. So we need to first prioritize, that's very important, but also use these very innovative techniques of, of making decisions, like design thinking, for instance, which is now becoming more common. So make use of that. And, and one aspect of design thinking that I, I think it's very uh, valuable and we, we can use uh, in our daily lives and in our companies is reframing the problem. So sometimes we think that we know what's going on, but if we stop to think and apply the process of design thinking, we may see the situation we're handling in a very different way. So reframing the problem is important, but also something that we can do this, at this moment in time in, in the world much more than we could before is collaboration. I think we have to realize that we can't do anything ourselves alone anymore, so we need to collaborate. We need to work with each other. And, and the world, the way it is with you know, this digital world, this digital transformation, it allows us to do so. It allows us to collaborate. Um, there is a professor in Oxford called um, Ian Golding, and he, he, he calls uh, our attention to exactly that. So the fact that not only we're living this new renaissance with technology, science evolving so fast, but we can connect people much more easily in real time. So collaboration can happen in a much more efficient way. Actually, he even calls us to make use of the collective endeavor, this power of the collective that in the past, in the times where Leonardo da Vinci lived, wasn't there, but now it is. So it is the time of our lives and we can make use of that and take advantage of that. We can take advantage of that to build resilience. Resilience is another important aspect that we have to take into consideration in the moment we're in. With all of the you know, effects of climate change, um, hurricanes, extreme weather conditions, we have to think of how we're going to not only rebuild the infrastructure that's there, but as we modernize, as we grow, as more people are living in cities, how do we have the, the right environment for that? How do we build resilience in cities? So how do we build resilience in the individuals, in cities, in, 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 in bigger infrastructure uh, projects? And make resilience not only a tool to face change, to embrace change, to not suffer so much with change, but also to have uh, change happen, to enable change, to be proactive about change. So this is a, 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 a very important concept that we can only um, embrace if we collaborate. So collaboration can lead to resilience and resilience can lead to action and can also in, um, empower us to put into practice this very good aspects of you know, technology and allow us to have better lives. So all this knowledge that we have available, all these tools that we have for decision making and collaboration um, we can even have the, the, the privilege of knowing how to live healthier lives, better lives, and um, use this knowledge to improve ourselves and improve the world. So innovation, practice, and thirdly, and very important, purpose. So what do I mean by purpose? If the quantum physicists are right, that we are all connected, because energy, right, is there. Um, and I think it is time for us to rethink our lives as not alone and actually part of a bigger thing, part of a bigger purpose. So um, again, borrowing a little bit of the knowledge from quantum physics, our thoughts matter. So this is energy, right? So our intentions matter. So if the intentions that we put in our daily lives matter and can influence the world, it's time for us to move to impact. So not only having financial returns with our businesses, but looking for societal, for social, and for environmental impact is very important. This movement has been going on for a while now, so you, you, know, you think of uh, John Elkington and the concept of triple bottom line, you think of uh, conscious capitalism, you think of um, the B Corp, the B Team movement, Benefit Corporation, the ESG metrics, 
Everything that's out there and um, impact investing, so this industry has existed for 10 years now, and there is an organization called the Global Impact Investing Network, GIN, that is measuring the progress that's the, that this industry is, is having. And, and it's great to see the, the findings. So they just issued a survey and 84% um, of their respondents are saying that the, they, they really can demonstrate a greater commitment with impact investing. Another important aspect is that they say that, um, you know, 70 percent of them say that the conversation is shifting now. It's not only a matter of asking why impact investing, but it's more into like, how can I start uh, applying or investing with impact? So the millennials are asking for that. The companies, some companies are making great change and leading as role models in that. Um, and I myself, I am I'm very uh, happy to also be making that change. So moving from corporate executive to, to entrepreneur and creating the BRIA Institute with that in mind. So innovation, practice, purpose. Um, one of my Priority projects also um, addresses that in a way that it exemplifies what I'm trying to say. So we're working with Dr. Morris Notelovitz and the Brain Health Project. So great innovation that he developed as a doctor with you know years and years of uh, knowledge and experience is going to be brought to the world to help solve a very big and important challenge we have nowadays, which is dementia. So dementia is already um, health, public health problems. So politicians, the organizations around the world are already trying to address this problem in a different way because we are living longer and we need to live with, you know, our minds. We need to be able to have our integrity and to be able to, to live good lives. And um, so we need to collaborate and join forces and bring these innovations to life to tackle this important problem. And the Brain Health Project is something that we believe is going to be that, and is going to bring more collaboration, innovation into the world to solve a, a big problem. So I think that's, that's the message I'd like to leave with you. And um, as we realize that we are all connected, that we are interacting more and more these days, and that we are evolving I remember one um, very interesting uh, thing that Craig Barrett, the former chairman of Intel, whom I had the pleasure of working with, used to say af after every meeting, he would say, it's all about people. So with that, I'd say, it's all about people. So people, come on, let's you know, take action. Let's put some purpose in our lives. Let's consider ourselves part of this bigger thing. Let's uh, you know, change our lives in a way that we like that is good for the world, that's going to help the world be a better place to live. So as we think of our lives as individuals, as we think of our companies, our um, projects, and as we think of our planet, let's collaborate, let's bring innovation, practice, and purpose to our daily routine.